All right, I had to get some air in my tire. So we are at the Hayek parking lot by the um, bike trail. We actually need to go look at the sign over here. But it's in the upper 50s. It actually feels like it's getting colder. So here's the rest area they have at Hayek. Kwame Tunnel, 0.4 miles to the right. Cedar Falls Trailhead, I think that's where we did it last year. For. And we're gonna try and go, uh, I don't think we'll make it to the Eastern Trailhead. My app says it's 13 miles, so I'm not sure what this 18 mile thing is. But this part of the trail is not very good, so we're gonna go through the parking lot. bigger rocks on it than I thought there would be the section closer to um, 20 miles to the west is crushed rock I would say like really fine pebbles I don't remember it being this rough if you get off of the track but I have my app on I'm mapping this ride this time so we'll see how far we go I think it's around 230 We should see the lake soon. Water plant for Hayek right there on the right we just passed. So we want to come here and um, snowshoe, maybe even cross country ski on this part of the trail in the winter. Now that we know it's right by that parking lot. <laughs> Here's some bathrooms. Ah, this is another parking area farther down the road. This is nice. Whoa. I think I like where we're parked though, and there's more cars than people. A little leery of some of these trailheads in Washington. They get a lot of break ins and car prowlers. But it's good to know that one is there. Yeah, I brought our bike lights. So if we decide not to go very far to the east, we'll just maybe we'll go through the tunnel at the end of the day. Since we're only a half a mile from it. It'd be kind of fun. But we'll see, see how this goes.
so it's a 600 foot elevation drop to Lake Easton State Park so that's pretty gradual over like 12 15 miles it should be fairly flat this ride Wow, I think we're going into the wind. Wind is coming from the east, it feels like. So maybe going back, we'll be going uphill. And with the wind, it'll be even easier than I thought, which would be awesome. So there's a road on the southern part of the lake that I-90 passes. I did not know that. I don't know if it goes along the entire southern shore or not. I'll have to check that out sometime. I also want to try and come over, I think it's Sherman Pass. Um, instead of I-90 comes out over on the east side by the east side of the lake. It's only open in the summer. And I think it's a gravel dirt road like this basically. I gotta do that though before it snows. So maybe I'll do that in the next week or two. Definitely not Lake Crescent Trail, but it's still nice. <laughs> that trail is awesome. Uh, it's a perfect day, like it's not hot. So, oh, you can camp down there. Wow, they have dispersed camping. I have to go there. I had no idea. Maybe the first night I go on my trip, if I don't leave the house in time, maybe I'll just drive here and spend the night. It'd be a good place. I'm not sure what time I'll get out of the out of the driveway when I actually go later this um, summer. Finally, I want to try and go to Yellowstone because I'm leaving. My wife is staying home and our cat is staying home. So I can actually take the truck into Yellowstone National Park and it would be really easy compared to the RVs impossible. You can't find a parking spot, but we'll see. I might just end up in Eastern Oregon or maybe Western Montana. I don't really know what my trip is going to be. getting my Lightner active cargo system gear pods on Monday hopefully tomorrow and if they're not in it'll be Friday of this coming week it looks like for sure I think they're in though I never got a phone call saying they weren't and tomorrow is my appointment take an hour to install both of them Wow, this would be really fun to cross-country ski on for sure. So I'm going to try and get cross-country skis probably in September just to make sure I, they don't run out like last year. We can cover a lot more ground than snowshoes. Hopefully the Stabilization is working on all these bumps. I always wonder. It'd be awesome if we can do 20, 24 miles total today. 
10, 12 miles in each direction, I'd be happy. There's a bridge over the Yakima River. If we get to that, I think we'll turn around. That's the one we snowshoed to in the winter when we went to Lake Easton State Park. If you want to watch that video. The snow level was fairly low, wasn't that great. But I'm glad we checked it out. camping right there for bikers that is really nice there's even a bathroom pit toilet that is super neat So there's a bike channel I watch on YouTube. I haven't watched them lately, but I used to. It's a Ryan, I think it's Ryan Van Duzer. He lives in Colorado, I think, but he does trails like this. He biked, I started watching him because he biked across the country, road bike. And I thought that was really neat. He's biked from Central America all the way up through Mexico to the US. Like that might've been 10 years ago he did that, I think. It's pretty neat though. I didn't watch all that yet. I'm just impressed when they have backcountry campsites for bikers like that along these trails. It really impresses me. I think if you're hiking, you could stay there too. And it's free. You don't have to pay anything. They have little tent pads and I think there's fire rings even. We need to get um, some bike computers so we can easily see how far we've went. Like right now my phone's in my pocket. I don't want to like get it out to see what our distance is. Maybe that's the next thing we need to buy. I don't think they're that expensive. One or two hundred bucks probably for a decent one. miles seems like a long ways. It's only an hour of biking though. You just think of like if you had to walk that far, you know, it would take you forever. Because we only go 10, 12 miles an hour. That's our speed. We're pretty slow. But 
we are going east from Hayek, Washington. Hope we can get a glimpse of the lake on the left here as I go around this corner. Let me get in this lane. There. Hopefully you can see that. Wow. Let's stop and look at that real quick. So that's I-90 over there. How neat is that? So my question's answered. The road does not go along the entire southern shore of the lake where I saw the dispersed camping. That is neat. Here comes my other half. Let's get moving. Finding all kinds of campgrounds by doing these bike rides. <laughs> it's really neat. Places we would never have thought of staying. Or I could spend the night with the truck there just to make a cool video. Avalanche and rock slide area. down to the lake. Parking lot closes at dusk, which is about 8 p.m. So we should be fine. We, my plan is to be back by 5 p.m. I'm thinking. So two and a half hour ride. I think we could do that. Oh, a little sign there. I'll have to read it all the way back. Talked about avalanches here, I guess. Oh, this loose gravel is not good. Wow, look at that view though. How neat is that? Let's pull over again and get a shot for you. So there's the interstate. And that's the dam straight ahead. The um, bumpy gravel is making my hands numb I didn't get that last week from the ride because it was so smooth
but no, we'll get going. Surprised we haven't seen more people. I wonder if most people went um, west through the tunnel instead of this way. They're both fun. I mean, you can't beat this view. We've been getting more rain in the eastern part of Washington in the last week. Most of the wildfires in Canada are out. And uh, Montana and Idaho, there's not many left either. If we can just get a little rain in central Washington, the fires would be done. That'd be awesome. It wasn't that bad this year for Washington. Oregon had one big fire, that was it. And then, you know, a bunch of little ones, but... If you can keep them from being giant, you know, that's a win. So there's a um, cross-country snowshoe ski area about two miles east of the lake here. And I think we go right by it. I'm really interested, interested to see how close this goes to the parking lot because we snowshoed there last year. And I can't remember the name of it at the moment. Crystal Springs, I want to say. That might be it. It's a big snowmobile area too. Pay attention to the trails. <laughs> Watching the lake. I think if one of us had a flat, I would just give my my wife the, the bike with the good tires and let her ride back to the truck and wait in the truck. And I would walk back with the flat tire bike. Unless we were really far, I would just ride it and if I had to buy a new rim, I'd buy a new rim. But at least she can go back to the truck and sleep inside of it or rest or something. Or in case I don't get back before they close the gate. You know, she could let somebody know. No sense in both of us walking back if we had a flat tire. I just thought of that because all the rocks. And because I forgot our bike bag, we don't have any spare tires. Inner tubes. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. I've never forgot it before, I don't think, ever. Yeah, we definitely have an east wind. So going back, it's gonna be blowing us, which will be awesome. It's getting stronger too. So 
this is mile 2111 and that's from Chicago if I remember right that's where this line used to go to Chicago Illinois I don't know what replaced it because um, there's a train track on highway 2 maybe that replaced this it had to have because highway 12 does not have a train track crossing the pass So I think you got to take Highway 2, that train track, or go down to Portland to get out of Seattle if you're on a train. Only two ways to get over the mountains. So when we get up here to the dam, I will stop, wait for my other half. I'll pause the video. I'm hoping that once we get up to the dam here, we went five miles, I hope. That'd be almost half the distance we want to go. Kind of wish we had left earlier. I mean, we were in the parking lot at 1.30, but we decided to take a break and got in the tent on the truck and rested it's nice not rushing in the morning to get out because one it's cold for one if we would have got here it'd probably be in the 40 low 40s at, you know nine o'clock this morning here Uh, let's look at the lake again. That was a good viewpoint. Might be one of the last ones. Look at that. All the tree stumps from when they cut down the trees. Oh, there's a person down there in red with a dog. Wow, I have no idea how she walked down there. Like where she came from. It's quite the hike. Oops. Trying to keep the camera level when I do this. I like this shot. Well, I'm going to stop this while I wait and I will be right back. All right, here we go. So we went 4.55 miles, my app says. So our goal is, I mean, it'd be awesome if we can do 10 to 12 miles each direction. Um, our next goal is like three to four miles in front of us, and we'll see how we feel. It's just really bumpy. Like, I think we can do it though, we'll see. We have hybrid bikes, so they're they're across, they're in between a road bike and a mountain bike. So the tires are not um, they're not really optimal for anything. <laughs> Is the way I look at it. It is really fun though being out here. I love biking. I almost like it more than hiking, maybe because you cover more ground. I'm glad I started the app though. It's nice to be able to see how far we've went. And it tells you how long it's taken to do it too. We're probably doing, we're probably only going eight to 10 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't even think we're doing 12. We might not even be doing 10. We're pretty slow. Now that guy had thicker tires than us. I just looked at the tread on one of my tires. It is getting kind of low. Maybe I just need to go for more of a mountain bike tire when I get new tires, because we don't ride on pavement that much, it turns out. And I would be really sad if I got a flat. Ah, oh, that's the Roaring Creek Trail we just passed. Oh, wow. Pretty neat. There's another trail coming up. So last year we wanted to bike in Minnesota when we went there, but the freezing weather came and chased us to Texas. So we didn't get to do that. There's tons of rail trails in Minnesota. There's hundreds of miles of them. That's one of the things, like if we ever were full-time RV people, we'd have the truck and the RV. I would want to like do all these bike trails. How fun would that be? You know, find campgrounds near them and just do them all. That would be an achievement. gloves would help with the bumps so your fingers don't get numb or is that just from not riding a bike enough not getting the circulation in your, in your hands from all the weight you're putting on it it's not like horrible it's just kind of annoying campground here and backcountry camping. Wow, I can't believe how many campsites they have like that. Really neat. No fires. So. so if I had to guess, I would say it's six to seven miles from where we parked to get to the other end of this lake along I-90. Those people were walking the bar that we just passed. If they're going back to the parking lot, they got a five mile walk. Unless there's something up ahead, I don't know about. Some access point. kind of fun not doing driving videos like I'm just doing some biking videos now like I didn't have to film any drive any of the drive up here since I've already done it I feel like I done a lot of driving videos because of my trip we're getting out this year finally this is I don't think we rode our bikes but one or two times all of last fall summer and fall we've done it twice in two weeks now our goal is once a week at the minimum to get out on our bikes and if we're not biking hopefully we're hiking it finally we haven't hiked it all this year but my goal is to get in shape for 
snowshoeing and cross country this winter. And we're gonna get out in the rain and do hiking this year and not stay inside. Definitely make my bottom sore too. I didn't have that problem last week on the smooth trail. It's like right now I'm standing up, getting a little break from sitting down. We need to get these seats. I think they're called Brooks from England. They make them in London, I want to say. They're like $200 bike seats, but they're like super comfortable. Now I want to say they must have some type of gel or something, but. They use lambskin, I think, on the top, the outer part. They're just super, super soft. People swear by them that I found on the internet. So maybe I need to order those. When I looked last year during COVID, they were all back ordered. Maybe now they're caught up. So that would help a lot. Our biking shorts don't work very well, I don't feel. And two, we also forget to wear them most of the time. But I think their biking shorts are cheap. Like if we had some that like bike racers use, I'm sure they would be better. Like these guys look serious. 